that is uh, CRRT and ECMO, Dr. Jagdish. Dr. Jagdish is a senior consultant in cardiac anesthesia and critical care from uh, MGM Healthcare. He's with us for last, I mean, we're together for more than 11 years now. Over to you, Dr. Jagdish. So, I think it's uh, getting late and uh, this will not be as interesting as ECMO, cannulation and this thing. So, uh, so initially, uh, uh, Sunil from Baxter will basically explain about the CRRT machine, the various pumps, and I'll be talking about the ECMO and uh, the various sites where the CRRT circuits can be connected. Sunil, you can start. <coughs> View how the CRT machine is getting connected. Uh, from there, we will be uh, demonstrating uh, how CRT machine is getting connected with the circuit. So over to Adam. Adam. Yeah. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'll just quickly demonstrate how to connect a CRT circuit to the device. So I'll explain the device first. So the first is the monitor. The second is the pumps and sensors of that. Can you just take out the mask, please? Yeah, sure. Is it good now? Yeah. yeah, what I was telling is the first part is the monitor where you get the information and you give the uh, commands to it. And then the second part is the pumps and sensors. And the last we have scales. Okay, so we have uh, totally five pumps. The, uh, the, big, the, the bigger pump is uh, blood pump, and we have uh, effluent pump, uh, pre blood pump, and then uh, dialysate pump, and replacement pump. So I'll quickly tell you how to uh, uh, insert the kit in this. So this is the first screen you'll encounter. So uh, every screen there will be a heading given. So uh, that will suggest you what to do in the same screen. Okay. So in this screen it says uh, choose patient. So we have two options here to give a uh, patient. So one is new patient, the other one is same patient. So same patient is activated uh, active for 72 hours. So if you give same patient, uh, the preloaded patient's details, uh, settings and all will continue from the same. So when you're starting a new, on a new patient, you give new patient and then enter patient ID. So I'm just giving a random ID, and then patient weight. And then I'm entering the patient hematocrit. So here we are confirming uh, patient information, that is patient ID, patient weight, and patient uh, hematocrit. In case you need to change anything, you can use these soft keys. So I'm confirming. So and then what therapies we can do in this. So we can do CRRT, CRRT mars can be done in this, and then TP, therapeutic plasma exchange can be done in this. And then hemo uh, purification can be done on this. So currently we are doing CRRT, and then what mode we are selecting in this. So we uh, predominantly use CVV HDF mode. So I'm going to CVV HDF mode. So in this, choose anticoagulant method. There are two types of anticoagulant. The one is regional anticoagulant, the other one is systemic anticoagulant. And in case if you're doing with the ECMO, you can you go for no anticoagulant also. So confirm anticoagulant, no. So we're confirming it. So again, therapy is uh, CRRT, therapy mode is CVV, HDF, uh, anticoagulant, none. Okay. So this is the step-by-step uh, step step process where you insert the kit. So once you press the step, the picture changes here. So you can see the picture and then connect it. So the first step says snap the cartridge into the carrier. So this is the, uh, this is the kit. Uh, it'll have, this is the cartridge. So it'll have holes here. So you have to fit it in here like this then go to the next step it says attach all pressure pods so there are three pressure pods used in this the first one is effluent pressure pod the second is access pressure pod the third is filter pressure pod okay uh, the picture also changes here so that you can see uh, what you have to do in this step so the third step is uh, snap discharge ring into the guide, press effluent line uh, into the blood leak director. So this is the discharge ring. This is there to, uh, this is there to ground the excessive electricity which, is, uh, which might run through this uh, lines. So this is the blood leak director which detects if there is any blood leak in the effluent line. So the fourth step is temporarily hang access effluent Y line. So this is access line, this is effluent line this should be hung in the priming hook on the side. The next step is place de aeration chamber in its holder, attach chamber monitor line to the written pressure port. So this is the de aeration chamber. In case if there is any air bubbles in the system, uh, this will be de aerated in this chamber. So insert this. So this is the written pressure port. The 
next step is insert return line into air detector and return line clamp close the door of air detector so this is the air detector in case in case there is uh, the air passes through this deaeration chamber this is for the safety feature if the, uh, this detects the air bubble and then now the clamp is open so that i can push the uh, tubings inside the clamp once air is detected in this uh, in this detector the clamp closes the clamp pinches the line so that the blood doesn't flow to the patient so the last step is open effluent scale hang uh, effluent collection bag into close the scale so this is the effluent scale so this is the effluent bag which will be given to you with the kit so you have to That's it. We have finished all the steps. Once we are done with the steps, give the load. So automatically the kit goes, fixes inside the pumps. So once the kit is loaded, it tells us what kit we have loaded. So this is M60. So confirm set loaded M60, we confirm it. And then these are the second steps of uh, connection. Here we connect the bags. So the first step is to insert the root lines in the tubing guide. The second step is connect access effluent Y line to the priming solution. So priming solution is always the saline. So this is the access effluent Y line. This is connected to the saline. Third step is connect a uh, pre-blood pump line to the PBP bag. So this is the PBP scale. The PBP line is white in color as it is in the scale. The next step is to connect dialysate line to the dialysate bag. Then we connect a replacement line to the replacement bag. So during priming, the saline flows through the kit. So all the priming solutions should be collected somewhere. So we are connecting the return line to the effluent bag for the uh, time being. While connecting to the patient, will be this will be connected to the patient's uh, catheter. So since we are not using this uh, anticoagulant line, this is the heparin line. So since we are not using this, we are clamping this for now. And then continue. And then we give prime plus prime test. So when we give prime plus prime test, the whole uh, saline goes through the kit and then remove.
bubbles uh, in the kit. So this takes some time. So what we have done is we have finished the priming and prime test, and then we have uh, kept the machine set for that. So uh, we have completed the first phase of uh, CRRT. So the CRRT circuit is over. Now what we will see is uh, we will see how uh, uh, the LVAR, uh, the machine is getting connected along with the oxygenators and all. And then we will see how CRT kind of circuit is getting connected with the ECMO circuit. This is the second phase. Uh, over to Dr. Jagdish. So this is a model uh, ECMO circuit here. And uh, you can see this is the uh, venous uh, line which is getting drained from the patient. And this is the uh, Levitronics pump. It's a fully magnetically levitated pump. So there is uh, no contact with blood surface and uh, less chance of uh, clotting. So the blood get goes through the oxygenator, comes out and goes to the patient. This is the arterial limb of the ECMO. Uh, this is the console and you can see the uh, uh, RPM and flow there. And there you can see the hemotherm connected there. So once you have decided to start uh, giving renal replacement therapy for a patient on uh, ECMO, so what are all the options? So, uh, the best one uh, would be to uh, to put a separate uh, I mean, access line and do a CRRT in that always. Uh, mm -hmm. So there is no uh, disruptions and the, your preferred dose is always continuously given. So, but in ECMO, your already your great vessels are uh, being used by, uh, if you're in VV, both the veins are used. You have only one more uh, vein. So to avoid that, you can connect the CRRT in, into the ECMO circuit. <clears throat> so the first one would be to use an inline hemofilter, which is basically like your uh, conventional ultra filtration we use in uh, cardiac bypass. Uh, so this is the, this thing you can just connect the uh, uh, hemofilter after the pump and give it back uh, before the uh, pump in the drainage line. So with hemofilter, uh, when we can just remove water, uh, there will not be any solute removal. So this is only if a patient is only in a fluid overload, we can use this. Uh, this is not of much use uh, for to remove the solutes. So the best thing would be to do a CR I mean, Again, hemoconcentrate can be used in other ways also. Uh, it can be used in the pre, I mean, they take it from the pre-oxygenator and give it in the post-oxygenator. Uh, the best, the <clears throat> the difference between a hemofilter and a CRRT, I mean, it's controlled by IV pumps. This is a separate machine which controls it. And there is no metabolic control in a simple hemofilter. And uh, of course, it's very less simple and uh, not much complex. So once you've decided to start CRRT in ECMO, I mean, where all you can connect it. So there are multiple places which can be connected and each has its own drawbacks and advantages. So the one such, uh, I mean, I think you can see, so you can uh, connect both the uh, access uh, point and the dry, uh, I mean, return point in before the pump. You can see the this part, uh, this is the part which is shown there. So you can connect both the access and uh, the return in the venous limb of the ECMO circuit. The <coughs> Disadvantage is uh, there is usually there will not be any connections here. There will not be any three ways or uh, connectors. If you have to do a CRRT in this format, you have to uh, put an additional connectors there. So uh, whenever an additional connector is put in the pre-pump, so there are always chances of air embolus because uh, this pump uh, it rotates at a very high speed and uh, any small uh, mis disconnection can cause air embolism. And once as go in, goes into these pumps, they usually stop. Uh, the, lev the Levitronics pump or even the <coughs> your uh, centrifugal pump stops. So usually, uh, this is not much preferred. So the other option is to uh, connect it uh, post uh, pump. Here the access line is again taken uh, from the post pump and the return line is given before the oxygenator. Uh, the advantage here is uh, it is uh, the return line is given before the uh, oxygenator. So whatever, uh, even if any small air bubble or clots are there, it gets uh, filtered in the oxygenator. But the only drawback is uh, since it's coming after the pump, the access line is coming after the pump, uh, your pressure to the CRRT machine will be very high. 
So usually it shows, I mean, these machines are uh, I mean, set for a certain pressure. If the pressure is high, they don't, uh, this thing. To avoid this, sometimes you put a partial clamp in the access line so that the pressure is not high in the CRRT. So the other uh, method of doing it is take the access line from the cannula, uh, from the venous cannula near the patient and give it uh, the written line again in the, uh, I mean, take it from the arterial line and give it in the venous line. So this forms a separate uh, large circuit and there will be, a, since you're giving, a, taking the blood from the, uh, near the patient, there will be shunting of blood into the machine. So some part of the flow will go into the machine and there can be some desaturation. So this, <coughs> this is one of the methods. However, there will not be any changes in the pressures in this uh, circuit. So there will be less disruption in the ECMO and your uh, preferred dose will be given continuously. So the easiest and the simplest thing is to take the access line from the uh, post oxygenator and uh, the return line pre oxygenator. So this is the simplest method. Already usually there will be some lure locks and uh, uh, three ways attached always before and after the oxygenator. So even if uh, I mean return line is given before the oxygenator, so there will not be uh, air bubbles or uh, clots getting into the circuit. <laughs> So what are the main things to uh, remember um, to, uh, the access and return points? So usually the, ac the access point uh, should be at a higher pressure and the return point should be at a lower pressure. And always uh, avoid returning the line from the CRRT post oxygenator. As I already said, even if some clouds or this thing is there, it will get filtered if you give it pre-oxygenator. And uh, and avoid pre-pump access, again, because uh, the pre-pump, your uh, negative pressure will be very high and uh, the flow to the machine will be affected. And uh, try to access post-pump or back of the oxygenator and uh, try to return it in the pre-pump. So that is a brief overview and I want to show this thing. So what we usually do is, uh, we take it post pump in the pre oxygenator the, the access line and return it in the pre pump so in this, uh, uh, this since you are returning pre pump uh, even if it flaws are there it gets filtered in the oxygenator so the main issue with this uh, connecting crrt in this thing is always the pressure uh, problems if the pressure is high or if the pressure is low uh, the crrt is disrupted always so to avoid this, we try to manage and uh, clamp the line partially and uh, do such maneuvers. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, now let's see how the CRT circuit uh, is getting connected with the uh, ECMO circuit. Now let's assume that uh, this is a running, uh, currently the ECMO is running, right, with a rotation permit of uh, RPM of 2900, right? Uh, now there are multiple options to connect CRT circuit between the uh, oxygenator as well as the uh, pump, but there is only one option which will not give us more frequent alarms. So I'll demonstrate that option first, and then uh, subsequently I'll go to the next next options and all. Ramesh, uh, over to you. So the CRT is ready now. So he's going to connect uh, this thing. Yeah. So like once we have done with the priming, so we will be getting this uh, flow settings window. So in this flow, flow flow settings window, we have the options to keep blood flow rate, PBP pump flow rate, dialysate flow rate, and replacement and patient fluid removal. So we have all these five options in this flow settings. So usually for when we connect CRRT with ECMO, we have we should have uh, we should keep blood flow rate quite uh, quite higher side. So I'm just keeping here around like above 150 ml per minute we can keep. So I'm just keeping 180 ml per minute blood flow rate. So I have kept blood flow rate is 180 ml per minute and uh, PBP is again based on CRRT effluent dose uh, that is again based on the patient body weight. PBP can, uh, can do uh, two things here. PBP can drive convection principle and it can act as anticoagulation when we use citrate anticoagulation, regional anticoagulation. So PBP is based on your effluent dose. I'm for uh, for uh, demo purpose, I'm keeping PBP is 500 ml for per hour. So PBP can, uh, can do convection principle that is the removal of uh, middle and large middle molecules through the sol solid, what, what we are giving through the solvent. So solid removal through solvent drag. I'm just giving PVPs 500 ml per hour.
And uh, next set, uh, setting is dialysate. set. Dialy set is basically does the diffusion principle. That is, it will be effective in removing small solute like urea and creatinine, and it can do a pH balance in our blood, electrolyte balance. So the dialy set again, that is also based on the effluent dose. I am keeping dialy set by default one liter per hour, thousand ml per hour. And uh, uh, one other setting is replacement flow rate. Replacement flow rate, again, I'm keeping 500 ml per hour. Again, it does the convection principle. So replacement, we always recommend to go with post replacement so that we can uh, save this deaeration chamber because always air contact will be there in the deaeration chamber. Whenever we keep a post replacement, the post replacement solution joins over in the chamber. So we recommend to ke keep a replacement as post replacement. And the patient fluid removal, uh, we can do 10 ml per hour to 2 liter per hour in our system by using adult uh, filter, M100 filter. So uh, for now, we are keeping patient fluid removal 0, 0 ml per hour for demo purpose. But we, can, we have the option of keeping 10 ml per hour to 2 liter per hour patient fluid removal. So we have done with all the settings. Once we have done with the settings, we will be getting this uh, preview, uh, preview, review prescription. So in this review pres pres prescription, we can have all the settings flow rate, like blood, PBP, dialysate, and replacement flow rate, and uh, the total effluent dose, and uh, patient loss or gain information will be there, and the filtration fraction, and ultra filtration dose. All the data will be there on the review prescription window. Once we have done it, uh, we have to give the continue, and we have to connect uh, artery venous, that is uh, dialysate, uh, Access written, uh, CRRT input and out output to the patient if the patient is uh, uh, done with a uh, dialysis catheterization. Now we, have, uh, going to, we are going to connect it with ECMO. So we have to connect access line or else CRRT input line to the uh, post membrane, which is the positive pressure, pressure side of the ECMO circuit. So CRRT input will be connected to the post membrane or post ECMO membrane, post membrane. CRRT output line or, or venous line, we call it venous line. Uh, CRRT output should be connected to the negative pressure side of the ECMO circuit, that is pre-pump. CRRT output will be connected to the pre-pump or negative pressure side of the ECMO circuit. So when we do these settings, we can avoid, uh, now like we, we cannot avoid the alarms continue, uh, like, it, like we, can, we can't say that it, there will be no alarm, but we can minimize the alarms. So I just connected the effluent line to the effluent bag. So now we have to give continue and uh, start the therapy. So when we start the therapy, this is how the uh, CRRT display will be. Now the CRRT therapy is going on. So we have a recommended pressure range. Access should be like access. So we have recommended pressure range, uh, ranges in CRRT. Access should, uh, should be always minus, actually, when we connect it to the patient. But we have connected with the ECMO circuit. That is why it is in plus now. But uh, by theoretical view, access, access should be in minus, minus 50 to minus 150. And same written, written or venous patient, uh, CRRT output pressure should be in plus, plus 50 to plus 150. 
So we recommend to connect CRRT input to the uh, positive, uh, positive uh, pressure region of the ECMO circuit. That is pre-membrane or post-membrane. And the CRRT output to, should be connected to the negative uh, pressure side of the ECMO circuit. That is the only option, pre-pump. Thank you. Just to add a word of caution, whenever you're handling on the negative pressure side of the circuit, please remember that it's a very highly negative pressure area. The handling of the three-way has to be done properly. If it's not done, you may have massive air suction into the circuit. So whenever you connect the CRRT or any other manipulation on the negative pressure side of the pump, inlet of the pump, be careful not to introduce air into the circuit. With that, we conclude. Uh, any questions? I think we have one more session left on the ECMO, this thing with simulation, I think. <coughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone, for patiently to be with us. Uh, we plan for one more session, but it's already 5.30. I would leave it to you whether you like to keep it going on or you want to wind it up. How many would like to attend? If we have reasonable, we'll be happy to go ahead with that. The plan was a simulation session. Sure, we'll go with it. We'll gather on the other side of the auditorium. <laughs>